Well, good afternoon. Uh, we're back at it after a, a, an open week where we practiced. We ended up getting four practices in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And uh, we're able to work on a lot of things that we felt we were deficient at, some special team areas and some uh, just some things within the offense and the passing game, as well as continuing to move on some of the younger guys uh, on defense, try to get some of those guys up to speed uh, that maybe they can help us a little bit more in the uh, uh, as the season goes on. But we made a big effort of working on a lot of competition things within special teams, some kick cover things, some punt defense, a, a lot of those scenarios that um, uh, you don't get a chance to work on as much because that's an area we still feel we need to continue to get better at. You know, our kick return isn't very good, our punt defense isn't very good uh, as far as statistical categories, so we needed to really shore those things up. Um, we also got some recruiting done as well, so it was, it was good. And then we were back in the office breaking down uh, a lot of Western Illinois yesterday. It was a good day in the office. The Packers won, so Palasek and Gazer were extremely uh, happy and in a good mood, and the Cardinals won the NL Central, so all is good in the NL front. So other than those Mets, probably they're, are in time they'll get there. So I'll open up for questions. Did you get through the offering healthy? Um, Vra turned his ankle uh, on Wednesday, but um, we envisioned him practicing today. And um, we hope to have Andrew Smith back. He practiced on Saturday. Now he still had a splint on his hand from his surgery, but uh, I think he'll be cleared this week. Um, Bo Likas practiced on Saturday. Um, we need to see if he can do some contact uh, early this week with his shoulder separation or his AC separation. So it would be great if we could get Andrew and, and Bo back. It would help us to shore up some special teams. And then, I don't know, each day Hardy runs a little bit better. 86 plays uh, the last two games for these guys. What's the, the biggest challenge with an offense like that? Getting lined up. Honestly, that's the biggest challenge is uh, getting lined up and not making it too complicated uh, from a from a scheme from a from a look to the sidelines scenario because if you're looking to the sidelines that ball is probably already gone it's happened to Northwestern it's happened to Wisconsin obviously happened to Southern Illinois that uh, they're going to go as fast as they can within reason and if if they get a good play they're getting on that ball and coming quickly and they catch some people um, not ready to play and the other thing that makes it really difficult. Um, is substitution. You know, if, if somebody's tired, they got to keep playing, uh, unless there's maybe an incomplete pass or something on your sideline where you can get them in and out. So that's the challenge because it's always really difficult to simulate that in practice because the the scout team guys still got to come back and look at that card unless we give them two plays in a row. And we'll do that a time or two to simulate the speed of it, but it's really hard to simulate that in practice. You guys have had a lot of success finally. What does that extra week of preparation and rest do for your guys and for the coaching staff? Well, it lets us self-scout probably as a coaching staff to see what we've done, see where we've had success, see where we've um, had some of our you know, failings, so to speak. Uh, I think it gives our kids a chance to to just get away from football. We get them away from football a few days, um, kind of refresh themselves, get them get their bodies maybe healed up from some of the nicks. But uh, you know, flip it. You can say sometimes when you're on a run, you don't want to get into a bye week. And so um, we still have to play really good football if we're going to win this game as well as any other game in our league. How difficult is it? You haven't seen these guys since your first year here in a couple of years. This isn't a team you've seen year after year. Well, you see so much film on crossover, which is good. You know, for the last three years, especially um, because Western does a lot of the things that we do defensively as far as their alignment and some of their coverages, we would always include them in a game plan if we were watching anybody in our league. We wanted to use them in the game plan because it's a lot of the things that, that we do here. So that has helped. We've seen them so much in crossover. But you're right, there, you don't know as much maybe about their personnel. You don't know as much um, about them as a team. Now it helps having Matt here because Matt was there last year and, and, and knows a lot of these players. But um, um, it, it's probably unique. I think this week, if I'm right, in, in Missouri Valley is all those matchups. You know, I think South Dakota State and Illinois State play and Youngstown and Missouri State and Indiana State and Northern Iowa and so on, all those matchups that haven't taken place in three years. So, um, no, I'm, I'm excited about uh, heading to Macomb. Is there all a little bit different for Valley football or is it something a little more standard? 
Oh, it's, it's a little different, uh, but a lot of people are running no huddle. It's just some people are, are slowing down their no huddle uh, and waiting to see what the defense is in, and some people are using the no huddle to get 87, 89 plays, and they're going to run the play no matter what defense you're in. They'll do both. They, they can go extremely fast, or they can slow it down, look to the sideline, uh, get what they think is in the appropriate check, and go from there. So um, no, I think people are doing it more so than they're doing what we're doing, which is lining up in a huddle and coming out and showing everybody what you're, what you're in. Kyle Manuel, uh, you said so much about his stats. What else is there about him that you like? Um, Great leader, great uh, great teacher. As far as you know, when he's not in, he's not standing back there. He's listening to the call and then watching Ambrosius or watching Han or watching Menard or Tuska and explaining to them, "Hey, you you got to spill this play, or you're the outside uh, lever player, or whatever it may be, or move your technique down, or use your hands better." He does a great job of utilizing his his knowledge of the game and passing it on to those young guys. Um, you know, as, as just, I just love the way he plays. You know, his stats are, are one thing, but he just the motor he plays with, uh, the tenacity he plays with. He he doesn't ever take a down off. How much has the exchange with Coach Nielsen there from what you remember? What has he done differently to change things at Western Illinois? Well, they've got a lot of young players. That's something that even Coach Ince has talked about. You know, I spent three years there in the early '90s with with uh, Randy Ball, and there was. Um, we had a lot of infusion of transfers and stuff, and that was when it was probably easier to get some transfers in. But uh, he's gone about it the high school route. Coach Nielsen's an unbelievable football coach. You don't win as much as Bob Nielsen and not be a great coach. He is, he's a great coach. He's a great person. You can tell they're a really disciplined football team. They're a well-coached team. Um, you know, he's trying to continue to bring some of the things he even had at Duluth, uh, where Goose was with him there. Uh, and, and bring it to Western, but um, you know they have so many young players on their roster, and they don't lose that many seniors. They're just, is, if he keeps getting his players in there, they're going to continue to progress. And I know they didn't play particularly well on Saturday uh, at Southern, and, and they they missed a wide open touchdown. They, they Southern blew a coverage and he overthrew him, or or maybe that's a different. They score there. They fumble a snap inside the one, uh, or they maybe score there. Uh, so. It didn't. They didn't end up playing, I think, as well as they wanted to against Southern, and missed some opportunities. But boy, they they looked pretty doggone good against Northwestern. And at the line of scrimmage, for three quarters, held their own pretty well against Wisconsin. What are you seeing out of King Frazier so far through the first four weeks? That after I know the injury hindered him in the spring. Is he where you thought he'd be right now? Yes, he is. He in. He's a punishing runner. He's a physical runner. He's a north and south kid that um, um, every time he's in the game, it's kind of interesting because a pile goes forward. And, and it's one of those things where, where Coach Palasek will, will say to Coach Roll, let's, let's ride him. Let's keep him in a play or two. And that's probably the difficult thing. We maybe should give him some more carries. But with Tim not being on the sideline, sometimes that's tough. Um, because Tim's up in the box trying to get to the next play, and sometimes we just naturally rotate people in and out that we've got to be able to try to maybe give him some consecutive carries, um, especially because he's such a fresh back with what we're doing with John and even with Chase. I mean, I like all three backs we have, and all three of them are, uh, have, a, have a real spot, and, and you guys saw that against Montana, getting all three of them in the game. But uh, uh, King's definitely where we thought he would be and probably even a little bit ahead because mentally um, he didn't miss a beat. Even though he missed a lot of practices, he doesn't miss protections and stuff. And we bring a lot of things at him from our defense, and he'll come up and put his face on Carlton or Travis. He's a tough kid. Where did that idea with all three backs in the back of the one time, where did that idea come from? Oh, I think it's some th couple of things. Uh, some of the things maybe to, at Northern Illinois. Um, we watched a little Sam Houston State, if you recall, in 11 and 12. They got into a, a lot of three-back stuff with a mobile quarterback. You know, and we're just kind of scratching the surface with that outfit. But it's something that I know from a defensive perspective creates some issues and creates some confusion because you're really limited in the amount of calls you can make on defense. Talk about the durability, versatility that Travis Beck brings to your defense. 
Uh, she's played played an awful lot of football games, and he's so talented in the fact that he can. He's a really good box linebacker and, and can fit the run and, and hit the isolation plays, things that are tough as a linebacker, but yet he can go out and cover their best receiver as a slot. Uh, it gives us the ability not to have to go to nickel every snap, not to have to stay in base. We put more on his plate from a mental standpoint than we do probably anybody on our defense. In, in fact, if he's got to know in these calls you're the inside backer and in these calls you're a glorified corner because he's playing on the slot receiver uh, like Iowa State for the whole game. So really smart kid, really heady kid, um, tremendous, so much better athlete than anybody would ever believe. You know, he's a 38, 39-inch vertical kid, um, got great strength, understands our system and where he fits. He doesn't make many mental mistakes. And um, uh, knock on wood, he's been healthy. You know, his shoulders held up. He hasn't, you know, there's some times you can tell he still favors it, but not to the extent he did last year where everything was one arm. I get back to Emmanuel once. You see he plays with tenacity, Chris, and a, and a high motor. We don't, I, I don't think we see that out here when you're just talking. Where does that switch happen? When you, when you mean you don't see, meaning if. I'm just talking to him, you know, he's just like, oh, nice gosh. Guy world, you know? Well. That's Kyle. I mean, he just when he gets on the field. He's just a different, different guy. He's a different player when he's on the field. He just um, he loves the game and he loves practice. He loves every part of of it. You go over to the weight room and watch him lift with Kramer. He's going a million miles an hour there. Winter conditioning, the same thing. Um, during our pursuit drills, you know, he's the guy passing up the the DBs and the linebackers sometimes because he just loves the game so much. That's the only way he, he knows how to play it. Is there a future for him? Absolutely. A lot of people have come around and asked about him. You know, he's just one of those hybrid guys. Is he uh, a, a stand-up outside guy? You know, is he, a, is he a defensive end? Probably a little undersized, but many people don't know. He came in as a Mike linebacker and um, moved him to defensive end. That was the year right before I got here, so he was playing some defensive end in the, uh, I think, as a scout team. But um, uh, he could – he's – he drops as well as our linebackers do from an end position, so absolutely has a future. How about the specials this weekend, knowing you spent time in Macomb going back there for this game? Oh, it's neat. Uh, there's not a bunch of people still working there, but a lot of them that, that I know are retired and still live in Macomb. So I'll get a chance to see a lot of people. Uh, my wife is going on this trip, and she graduated from Western Illinois. Uh, her folks live about an hour and a half away or two hours away up uh, up the Mississippi River. So her family's coming down, her brother. And, and so I'll get a chance to see a lot of people, and, and she'll get an opportunity to be with family. My folks and brother will be able to get down because they're only a three-hour drive. So uh, it's uh, I, I enjoyed it. I was there for three years as um, a young coach and without any kids, and, and uh, my wife and I had a lot of fun there. It's a, it's a neat place, and they will have an unbelievable crowd because – Two reasons. One, it's homecoming, and homecoming at Western Illinois is a huge deal. And um, they, all the alums come back. And there's a lot of great alums at, at Western, so I know they'll be out there in full force. Uh, plus, the Bison are playing. Last time in issue, I think we were there was homecoming. It was out of hand. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. The, the crowd and everything before the well, game. eleven was the last game of the season. I don't think many people were there. So then I wasn't there in whatever nine or ten, but it was a good crowd on homecoming. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. Just that one day of the year. I, I, that's a good question. I, I, my years there, homecoming was a was a huge deal. They they do a lot of um, alumni functions and stuff, and it's uh, it's always been a, a big crowd. You guys have kind of a rotation going on the offensive line, which that's not really common. What kind of advantages does that give you guys? Well, it keeps those guys fresh for starters. You know, we've we're playing Adam Schuler and Austin Kuhnert and. Kuhnert's probably not ready to play 60 games or 60 plays at guard, so we need to try to rotate those guys, keep them fresh. And then Jack and Landon, we just think are both really good players, and we've got to find a way to get them pretty close to equal snaps. Um, so those guys not only stay fresh, um, but continue to, to develop. And the best way to develop is by playing in live games. We're going to continue that.
I asked you last week about the strength of the Valley. The players realize, have they noticed what's going on out of conference now, that the league may be even better than all they are used to? Yeah, we talk about it uh, a lot. We, we've, I've talked about it with the captains the last two Sundays when I've met with them. We've talked about it at the end of practice in the fact of we're going into eight tough, tough football games that anybody can beat anybody. Everybody in the league has proven that. And if you don't have your A game, you're going to get knocked off. Uh, and our guys, they see what, what the Valley's done. They see, um, I think we were 20 and 1 against FCS going into this weekend and stuff. I, I, they see how, how competitive it is right now. And every one of the games that we've won against pretty much all the opponents in our league, at one time or another, probably were an either or game. You know, just looking at the games we've lost or the games we potentially could have lost during this streak. Um, I think all of them had had their adversity. And you go on the road in this league, you're going to have adversity. And just how well your upperclassmen and your seniors, the guys who have been around, can get those younger guys to understand there's going to be adversity no different than Weber State and Iowa State. It's just probably magnified because it's a Valley game and, and the importance is, is so high on those games because you've got to be able to win in your league that um, uh, we'll have some adversity. we just got to be able to fight through it.